Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Adil, and uh, welcome you all here uh, in the uh, World Literature Webinars. Uh, uh, thank you for to each every one of you uh, for being uh, here with us today. And uh, uh, let me tell you that here in the World Literature Webinars, we arrange international webinars <clears throat> where uh, most con uh, where uh, international uh, most experience and uh, experience and knowledgeable speakers uh, ex sorry uh, our webinars conducted by most experienced and knowledgeable speakers and they sh they will come here and share their uh, knowledge about their topic and uh, <clears throat> and the topic their topics uh, will be regarding the literature so uh, let me tell you that uh, this uh, this webinar is comprises three parts in which uh, there uh, in the first part in the first part we will uh, in the first part we will conduct webinar and the webinar is about uh, how can we learn english through literature and in the second part uh, we will have a question and answer section uh, where where you will ask questions from the speaker regarding the topic and in the last in the last uh, we will start the process of distributing certificate where you will get the feedback form of link which you which you have to fill in order to get in order to get the certificate and therefore was till end therefore uh, was till end to the uh, to get the certificate so now uh, let me introduce the speaker of the webinar. So here we go. So the speaker is Mariana Hidalgo as an English translator, English teacher, a superior educational specialist for te teens and adults, holds an MA degree in applied linguistics. Uh, she has worked as an English teacher at all levels in private and uh, public and private education for more than 20 years. At present, she is an academic consultant for important uh, like, uh, uh, educational institution leading research and innovation projects, teacher and trainer, lecturer at different conferences in Argentina, Spain, Mexico, and Pakistan, and writer on the social and emotional dimension of language learning and teaching. She is the director and founder of the English language centers in Argentina. Now I would like to uh, welcome the speaker. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello, Adi. Hello, everyone. Ma'am, your voice. Can now, ma'am, speak. Can you listen to me? Yes, ma'am. Now I can listen. Okay. Hello, hello, Adil, and hello, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Shall I start? Shall we start? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we okay. should start. Okay. Okay. So I am going to share my my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, well, hello everyone. Thanks for inviting me and for being here. Today we are going to talk about literature as a tool for learning English. Um, and the first thing that I would like to do is to show you the outline of the presentation. First, we are going to deal with what is literature, what do we mean by literature? Uh, some arguments for and against um, and reasons why teachers say that it is that sometimes it is uh, hard um, when applying literature in the English language classroom. Some arguments for uh, the challenges that teachers may face when selecting the material to work and uh, some steps to do when planning to incorporate the use of literature in ELT classroom and finally some practical ideas 
So here I would like to stop and pose a question. In today's technology fields where, where 140 character limits are the norm and information is just one click away, is there any place for book in the English classroom? And I hope your answer is the same as mine um, and uh, well we are going to talk about a little bit about readers uh, we all know readers and probably we have been working with them so many times um, readers contain a lot of activities and tasks for your students to do or to complete but sometimes they are a little bit standardized and um, like for example uh, answering the question or putting the things in order and we need more motivating activities i think that uh, one way to do this is to adapt these activities to your group not all the activities work in every group of the students so we need to transform these in tailor-made books uh, according to the reality of our group of students okay and now let's take a look at what do we mean by literature. Uh, Macrae distinguishes between literature with capital letter and with a, uh, with a small l. Lit, the first one that refers to the classical text like Shakespeare, Dickens, and the second one that uh, refers to popular fiction, fables, song lyrics. Um, the literature used in English language teaching classroom today includes the work of uh, different writers from a diverse range of countries using different forms of English, not only the classical ones. Literary texts that can be used, um, that can be studied, sorry, inside and outside the ELG classroom include short stories, poems, novels, plays, song lyrics, etc. Okay, let's. Uh, there are many, many reasons why teachers may not feel comfortable when working with literature. At the top of the list, we have we don't have time since we have to cover a lot of topics uh, included in the syllabus. In the syllabus, we need to focus on grammar, um, vocabulary, and different things. But we are going to see how we can do it by means of literature. In the second place, we find it's too hard for the students. Are in the book that I am selecting too advanced for the student language level? And this is, has to do with something that we are going to work throughout the presentation as one of the challenges that teachers may face when selecting the material to work uh, on their classes. Um, and the third one, you need to be an expert. Sometimes we may feel that our students have to know a lot of historical or cultural background to understand the book that we select. Uh, but now let's take a positive view uh, regarding literature. Um, literary texts offer a rich source of linguistic input and can help uh, your students to practice the four skills, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. We are going to see uh, how later on. Uh, in addition to um, practice grammatical structure and presenting new vocabulary. This is a good way, using literature is a good way of presenting vocabulary. Literary texts provide opportunities for multisensorial classroom experiences that apply to students with different learning styles. We can use music CDs, audio texts, podcasts, film, um, all of which enhance even further the richness of the sensory input the students receive. It's also helped learners to use their imagination um, and develop their own creativity um, apart from uh, uh, letting them explore some um, literary devices that occur in other genres, for example, advertising. They can create poems, posters, they can even perform plays. Um, it provides the students with a rich source of authentic material. When we present something, a, a book for them to read, it is a source of authentic material for them. It helps to develop their understanding of other cultures, awareness of difference. Um, uh, in a part, uh, we can teach or they can deal with universal themes such as world, love, evil. 
um, <clears throat> that sometimes they are not included in school uh, text uh, books. Okay, let me go on. Uh, let's see some the, some of the challenges or um, the criteria to select some material. Uh, five criteria are suggested for teachers to consider when deciding upon the suitability uh, of, the, of a literary text, and they are lexis, syntax, length, interest, and fam familiarity. We are going to see um, uh, quickly these five uh, challenges. Um, first, the le in the lexical level, is the difficulty of individual words or set of words. This can be an issue sometimes when the students are presented um, authentic material. Low frequency uh, vocabulary can be uh, unfamiliar, so we need to pay attention to this. Syntax, the, syntac the syntactical complexity may be daunting, maybe for students more accustomed to shorter books, particular in a school uh, textbook. A common issue is the appearance of long sentences with multiple clauses in which students can quickly get lost. That's why uh, we need to pay particular attention to these interlinked uh, factors when selecting the material to work with our students. Uh, in the third place, we have the um, length factor. Um, we cannot use the, um, the novels or the books that we selected in the way that we use in the student's mother tongue. Why? Because sometimes throughout the semester, the students are given uh, some novels at, about, uh, at a range of about one per week. Uh, because students have to face not only the, le the lexis and syntax challenges, but also the length, because the books are the, um, too long for them to read. Does it mean that we cannot work with longer books? No, of course not. We can, longer books can still be used, but we need scaffolding. When working or when scaffolding readings, we can chant the text, we can present the vocabulary, we can discuss the things, but we need to do it by scaffolding. We cannot present the book just like this, I mean, in, um, when we refer to a long book, okay. Interest and relevance. Any text that the teacher selects should have at least potential interest to our students. We know that it's difficult because throughout the semester we can receive students with different preferences and ideas, but I think, um, in my opinion, um, uh, one uh, paying attention to this will develop a pleasure for reading. Um, and finally, we have familiarity. We need to carefully consider what our students know, where they are. And I don't mean just geographically, but culturally, cognitively, uh, historically, um, so that they cannot find the, the book difficult to understand. Uh, but if you take into account these criteria or challenges, maybe you are not going to go through it. Students working on the literary text that I selected, expectation versus reality. Uh, and if you are to work with longer books, remember that the scaffolding is crucial. Uh, we, so we sometimes need to work with long books, but well, we, try, uh, we need to try to scaffold uh, the activities or, or the, the things that we present. And finally, cultural I included cultural difficulty. Uh, text should not be so culturally uh, dense that outsiders feel excluded from understanding their essential meaning. And, uh, um, and to, to finish these challenges, learners should not be offended uh, by textual content. Okay, uh, Daph and Malley uh, stress that if teachers, when selecting the material, if teachers pay attention or ask this set of questions, uh, they can deal with the challenges that the literary text presents. Is the subject matter likely to interest this group? Is the language level appropriate that we have this, uh, been discussing uh, just uh, this matter? Is it the right length for the time available? It, is this important to pay attention to the time we have to do this uh, reading? Does it require much cultural or literary background knowledge? Is it culturally offensive in any way? 
Can it be easily exploited for language learning purposes? They also emphasize that it is very important to um, the variation task difficulty as well as text uh, difficulty. And we can do it by uh, following this step. Uh, in the first level, we can select a simple text plus a low level task. Then we can select a simple text plus a more demanding task. Then we have um, a difficult text. We can choose a difficult text plus a low level task and then uh, a difficult text plus a more demanding task. Okay, let's go on with the other slide. Okay, another crucial thing to do is to determine the learning objective. Stating objective of using literature in ELT, in ELT helps um, to bring into focus the teacher's vision and targets for the course. Uh, Richards is of the opinion that learning objectives have four main purposes. First one, to provide a reason for a program, to provide guidelines for teachers and learners, to provide a focus for learning, to describe important and realizable in learning. In short, um, the learning objective describes what the learners will be able to do after completing the task. However, we need to say that um, these learning objectives are going to be formulating after knowing the needs of our group. It is very important to pay attention to the reality of our group when selecting the learning objective. Okay, once the learning objective have been formulated, the teachers can or may uh, select the teaching technique. The teaching technique here refers to the basic procedures of the implementation of literature in our uh, classrooms, okay? Um, I am going to take a look sometimes at my paper so as not to forget uh, any step of these techniques, but you can find, anyway, you can find all the material in the reference a slide they included i think that it is one of the last slides but you are going to find all the reference there and there you can find uh, all the techniques in detail but now we are going to refer in general to the most important ones uh, the first one is analyzing technique the center of attention is the linguistic expression of the text such as lexical items and phrases um, students are required to read uh, a short story beforehand. In class, the teacher is going to have some time uh, to take a look at them and underline the strong slide. I mean, the words that they find difficult or that they like, uh, then the class is going to be divided into groups and they have to reach an agreement to read their uh, strong line and to reach an agreement and choose only one strong line. Uh, they can explain why they chose this strong line and we can use this strong line to make them um, write a new piece of writing. This is a wonderful activity to do because they have to reach an agreement, they have to decide, they, they may vote if needed, uh, and then we can create another piece of writing with this uh, strong line taken from this um, book or for uh, these phrases that the, the students select. Mm, in the second place, we have completing technique. Students are required to complete the story in which some lexical items have been omitted. Uh, students, of course, students have to um, read this beforehand and in uh, the student, the, sorry, the teacher is going to prepare a set of copies uh, with gaps uh, for the students to fill in. This activity, these gaps can be uh, passive vocabulary, adjective vocabulary, anything that you need to teach. Um, uh, for example, teachers can leave out relative pronouns, we, uh, who, which, where, when, or adjective of personality. And then the students complete, they read their, vers their versions and they are uh, going to share the different views, uh, what they remember from the story. Uh, and then we later ask students to use these adjectives to describe the character in the story, for example. This is a, 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 an amazing technique to do it while working with short stories. 
Um, in the third place, we have memorizing and producing technique. Students have to memorize some lexical items um, and retell the story, the famous storytelling activity, but with a twist. Uh, students are required to read the short story beforehand. The teacher speaks uh, up from 10 to 15 words. He or she is going to um, write them on the board and give the students one minute to memorize the list. Then we cross out all the words and we ask the students to rewrite in the order they, that they appear. Um, we need to check uh, our students' uh, word list and those who write the most words are the winner. You, have, uh, you can have some gifts if you want there to, to motivate your students. Well, let your imagination fly and you can uh, use this technique. We have a lot of variation with this memorizing and producing technique. Um, in fact, one effective way of memorizing all the words is if the students uh, write the, the words uh, in sentences related to the passage. If so, they can recall the content of the passage. Uh, then you can use this list. I, I like this activity because you can use the word list to make up a new story. And if you want to do it more challenging, the activity more challenging, they can work in pairs. And one student um, has to write the story using the words from the top to the bottom and the other student from the bottom to the top. And this is very, very funny for them because they, they have to, to follow this order and the, the stories uh, are incredible. Uh, okay, then the transforming technique. And I think that this is one of my faves. Uh, because uh, in this technique, students are asked to transform a certain literary work to, um, from its original version or from its original form to another form. For example, from song lyrics to short story. Uh, we can do it this activity uh, while listening to the song, that it, it is going to create a wonderful atmosphere to work while we listen to the song. Um, they are required to. They are required to identify the uh, the unfamiliar words of the song. You can give it some time to find their meaning uh, in, the, in the in dictionaries, and then they are divided into groups, and they have to think of a, a storyline that represents the song, and then they can write a new piece of writing. Um, taking into account this storyline that they have already discussed. After that, each group has to write, well, a short story that represents the storyline of the song. Uh, and each group is going to appoint one of the group members to come before class and share uh, the, the new story. Um, I can guarantee that this uh, activity is uh, wonderful to do it. I, I did it with uh, my students at the teacher training college and it was uh, a, a good activity for them. Um, and, I, and I insist on the playing the music while working because it was wonderful. Uh, then we have finally the constructing technique. Uh, the students are required to construct a story. This is a, a little bit different because um, the students are not going to be presented um, the story beforehand. They don't have to read it at home. Um, that's why we, we call constructing technique. Um, the students are required to construct a story based, based on key sentences given by the teacher. The teacher is the one that gives the students some key uh, sentences. Um, in, in this, uh, the activity is called Storylines and is carried out uh, following this procedure. Students are not provided with the text, as we mentioned before. From, from each part of the story, uh, the teacher is going to select these sentences and they have to include in a task sheet. Um, I ask students to work in group of three, give each a group a copy of the task sheet and then they have to guess with this while they are reading the sentences they have to guess what is going to happen uh, the, in this chapter uh, with the, the sentences that the teacher gave and finally you are going to reveal what actually happened in the story by uh, means of reading 
this is um, these are um, I think that one of the most um, famous techniques while working with uh, literature. Uh, I love the transforming technique as I mentioned before uh, because it, it, it was um, a good way of doing different things at the same time. Uh, well, now literature as a model for writing. There are three types of writing that can be used, that can be based on literature as a model. Control writing, guided writing, and reproducing the model. Control model-based exercise, which are used mostly in the beginning level uh, writing, typically require rewriting passages, but for a specific grammatical purposes. For instance, students can be uh, reporters doing a live newscast, or they can rewrite a third-person passage uh, into first per, uh, into first person from a character's point of view. This is a wonderful um, uh, activity or way of working with the students at the beginning level. Um, then guided writing. Uh, this activity corresponds to intermediate level. Students report, respond to a series of questions or complete sentences when, uh, sorry, which, when put together, uh, retail or sum up a model. Uh, in some cases, students complete the exercise after they receive a uh, few sentences of the topic or description. Guided writing um, enables students to comprehend the general uh, piece of reading or, uh, yes, uh, read. Then we have the reproducing technique. Uh, this activity comprises three techniques, that is uh, paraphrasing, summary, and adaptation. These techniques are very beneficial, and we are going to see uh, how or why. In paraphrasing, students are required to use their own words, uh, their own words to rephrase the things that they see in print or hear uh, uh, aloud. Since paraphrasing coincides with the um, teacher trying to understand the the poem or the things that they are reading, they it uh, works perfectly with poetry. Then summary goes well with. Uh, short realistic short, short stories. Why? Because they contain uh, concrete elements like plot, um, uh, setting, um, they follow a chronological order, so the students are going to feel that they are guided uh, to, to, to get the, the final writing. And then we have the Adaptation that requires rewriting prose fictions into dialogue or reversally, rewriting a play or a zine into narrative. This activity enables students to be aware of the variations between written and spoken English. Uh, well, I think that these one are the things that uh, allows us to work uh, or to use literature as a model for make our students uh, write. Okay. Okay, so now let's some uh, let's to take a look at some ideas on how to use poetry. I have divided this part in poetry, prose, and drama. So we are going to work first with use uh, ideas on how to use poetry, then prose, and then uh, drama. Uh, remember that you can find all this activity in detail uh, that I have in in the. Um, reference material that I have included. Um, when using poetry, students can, first of all, be invited to recite the poem individually or as a group. Uh, this is a good way of uh, when you um, need to practice pronunciation or maybe some phonetics. I remember that one of our teachers in the train, our training college, we have some difficulties in pronouncing some um, some sounds uh, and she chooses uh, one of the poem with the sound and it was it was very funny because we remembered the poem and at the same time we were working pronunciation and that is a good way using a poem to and make them recite uh, and practice their own pronunciation um, draw pictures to illustrate the poem. They can draw pictures to illustrate the imagery in a poem and use symbols um, in order to describe what the poem looks and 
sound like then they can find appropriate music this is a, a, a wonderful activity uh, because uh, we we present a, a poem and they have to try to think and find an appropriate music that represents this um, this poem and images to accompany the word they can use so then visual poetry Visual poetry is considered an effective means of, of encouraging our students to read and to explore uh, this type of genre. And then we have creative writing. Uh, a step further is that using in order, um, by means of uh, another popular technique is that creative, uh, creative writing, which can be used with the students at all levels. Uh, then um, we can make a kind of rewriting of the poem, um, sh um, like something that Sherry Cole share writing. I am and I am going to read what he says. He found that by imitating the model and recasting it, students enjoy playing with the language used by an expert writer and gradually discover the courage to use the reading of poetry in order to compose their own poems. I, I prefer to read this because I found this very motivating. They can um, adapt or they can create a new poem by means of something that uh, they have already read. Okay, now let's go to an ideas. Uh, let's go on with ideas on how to use prose. Um, well, first of all, examining illustration, some uh, pre-reading activity. Remember that we can do it some pre-reading activities while reading and post-reading. So some pre-reading activities that students might do with readers and processors include examining illustration. They can see the illustration and predict what it, go, what it is going to happen. Um, chapter headings, we can give it some headings of the chapters and they can guess uh, about the characters or about the things that they are going to uh, happen uh, in the story. Blurbs for predictive purpose, purposes, maybe um, before le letting them know what we are going to read, uh, giving them the blurbs for predictive purposes and they can uh, make a discussion of what they are going to find in this book and then reveal uh, if they are uh, correct or not. They can make some research and create uh, an author uh, profile or deliver a short presentation on the, historical, on the story, historical and cultural background. This is a wonderful activity if you have to read, for example, some uh, historical uh, play or something, you can make them um, some uh, to investigate the cultural background uh, to understand in a better way the story. Um, then while reading the story, students can engage in uh, character role plays, they can uh, dramatize dialogue, they can write a character horoscope. This is a wonderful activity that one of my teachers did. Um, he selected some uh, character from the story and according to the things that um, uh, happen in the story, they make them to uh, a kind of creation of a horoscope, and, and it was very funny. Um, they can watch clips from a film adaptation and they can compare, they can uh, make a compare and contrast, uh, and contrast activity. Uh, what are the things included in the film or omitted in the film uh, when comparing uh, the version or, or the original form of the book? They can use audiobooks. Um, they use, as we mentioned before, it is very important since research has shown that simultaneous listening and reading uh, may facilitate a student comprehension of the whole text. Uh, and then some post reading activities they can make after reading this, they can create journals, reviews, and briefest things when uh, once they have finished reading the book that we selected. Okay, uh, so now let's pay attention to some ideas, uh, to some ideas on how to use uh, drama. We can do a variety of communication, uh, active or communicative activities with one act plays or other short pieces of uh, uh, drama. They can mime cer certain things. They can perform the dialogue by means of a rap. This is a wonderful day. Um, 
you choose a, a piece of um, of the play that you are reading, and they can they have to create a, a wrap uh, that represents that part of the story. Um, it it will depend on the level of your students at the age. Okay, remember and pay attention to that. Then another activity uh, is hot seating. Uh, hot seating is another entertaining activity that you can do that involves a student taking the role of one character and the rest is going to ask as if uh, he or she um, were the main character and they are going to ask questions and different things, but the, the student is the one that taking the role. Um, and this is a wonderful activity too. Um, then they can collaborate to add stage directions to the text and discuss costume and lighting as if they were um, working in that uh, movie or film. Uh, then we can debate the students, uh, for example, in a balloon, uh, debate the students have to agree on which character is expandable and his uh, usually leads to a live uh, class discussion. They can write alternative endings. For example, you omit uh, the final or the ending, and they have to create an alternative ending. Uh, or you can leave it the, the ending as, as it is and give, well, now try to think an alternative ending. How would you like to uh, finish this story? And uh, the writing of alternative ending and a scene uh, set of uh, 20 years into the place future stuff in students' imagination, drama, in the language uh, classroom offers them a multi-sensory form of engagement with English. Uh, okay, so now um, that we are about to finish uh, this part, um, I would like to say that activities should be as learner-centered as possible. Literature in language education uh, is not only meant to enhance a student's proficiency, but most importantly, to cultivate their pleasure in reading uh, literary texts. That's why we insist on the, the five criteria that we mentioned at the very beginning, uh, that is to say, to um, select a material with these uh, five criteria, uh, taking into account the length, the things, the vocabulary, and different things that we uh, need to pay attention when selecting so that uh, they can feel more motivated to read literary texts. And here I have added some useful sites uh, for you to have. The first one, the first QR uh, code uh, has literary article, then we can find story hand po uh, stories and poems, then some teaching materials using literature in the English language classroom. Um, and uh, I chose this um, phrase to finish, great literature is simple language charged with meaning to the utmost possible degree, because I, I really like that phrase. Here you can find the references and uh, all the, the activities that we mentioned. This, this is a, a general presentation. We can go into detail to, to all of them, but here you can uh, find most of the material that I said. So thank you so much for listening. I am going to stop sharing there. You have my contact if you want to ask me something or send me an email. Um, okay, so I am going to start to st stop sharing a deal. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it was a really wonderful presentation. And uh, thank you so much that uh, you have uh, taken the time for us. And now we are moving towards uh, another part, which is uh, question and answer section. So, do, we have a, do we have a chat, uh, uh, am I right? Yes, ma'am. I if if there is any question, I will uh, bring up here on the screen, and you can see there. Ah, uh, I can. Can I see it? Yeah. I will. You will. Hello. Guys, uh, if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, actually, uh, ma'am has gone. I think uh, there is a problem uh, with uh, her network. 
she will come back uh, let me see Hello, I'm back here yes. again. I don't know what happened with my connection, but I am here again, so sorry. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. Okay, I, I was about to tell you um, that I would like to know where the where the people are. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there must be comment section, I think. Is it? Our countries where where our participants come from, uh, ma'am. Uh, uh, there is a question. Uh, if you had a card, let me. I can see the chat, Adil. I don't know why. Ah, yes, ma'am. Now. Uh huh. Here I have. I I can. I have. I I am going to. I am able to read one of the questions. If you had to pick a graded readers collection, with which one would you choose? I like Penguin readers um, to work or Macmillan readers. I don't know if you if uh, if it is that what you meant, uh, because they have different levels of of uh, English and they. They they can be selected uh, according to the level uh, of uh, of the of course the English level of your students. I, I like the both both of them. I don't know if uh, if that was the question. I only see one question. The, if you had to pick a graded readers collection, which one would you choose? For a senior, how can you set checks for an activity? Oh, you can adapt all the activities. For, for a senior high students, you can adapt all. I, I think that the transforming technique will be uh, one of the um, one of the most um, or the more motivating for them uh, because you can select. Uh, I think that uh, I choose this one because it's one of my favorite. But uh, you can choose a song that they like and they can transform. Uh, that song into a piece of writing or into a piece of reading, and sometimes you can um, you can find a, um, a song that represents I don't know a story that they have to read because sometimes we need to we need to cover a, a, a book that it is compulsory in our syllables. For example, uh, I don't know. Well, they have to write the Great Gatsby. Okay, we'll try to adapt this activity or try to make this book more motivating for them to learn because it is compulsory. They have to read it because it is included. Sometimes we, we don't have the chance to select the material because they have to know that. Uh, and, but I think that um, any of the techniques that we have mentioned before, the transforming technique or uh, maybe the completing technique, they can be applied to high uh, to, to senior high students. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have another question. For uh, can you suggest any activity for? Uh, I think that the first one, uh, Ravi, the the one that we mentioned as a control writing. Uh, that uh, work uh, well with um, beginning student level because uh, they they allow or uh, they allow you to uh, to um, work with a specific grammatical context. For example, if you need to to teach, for example, let's let's uh, say the present simple and make them remember the uh, famous s that they have to add to the verbs. Well, this is a good way. To do it, control with control writing, I think, because uh, this technique functions uh, within this content. When you need to to teach a specific uh, grammar content with beginners, okay, that's the, the, the question. Can you go to, um, Yes, okay. Oh, <laughs> that's a difficult question. Uh, how to use the literature during all the steps in the class? 
uh, if I have a students that uh, who don't like reading. Uh, I think that uh, the key or the most important things um, that you can do is to, uh, to try to select some material that uh, would be interesting for them. Uh, for example, I am going to tell you something that um, that happened in my family. My son doesn't like reading. I love books, but my son, who is uh, 16 years old, doesn't like reading. But now he wants to learn to drive. So the instructor gave, gave him a, a long book regarding the, the, all the things that he should know uh, by, when taking the, uh, the first classes for uh, for driving and he read a lot a lot why because he feels motivated he wants to do it he he needs to he wants to learn to drive so he's uh, uh, well um, this is i think that this is key that it is crucial to to um, to choose something that that motivates them to read some interesting topic. I know that it's difficult. You are going to tell me, well, but we have different students with different references and ideas, and it's true. But we we'll, we we need we have sometimes we have uh, similar ages in the groups, uh, so we can try to find um, a common topic uh, that can be interesting for them. But I think that first of all, um, if you don't need to follow a um, um, a syllable thing in which there are uh, compulsory compulsory books and you have the option um, to choose the material i think that the best way to try to make them reading is the 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 thing uh, to make them like reading uh, to interesting material interesting material is clue i i can see a deal Oh, what role? I can see a deal. I don't know. Uh, what role uh, does literature? Uh, I can't. I can't see you. I couldn't see you. Uh, what role does literature novel reading plays in developing a person uh, personality? Well, I think uh, what role does literature ah uh, novel reading plays in developing a person a person's personality? Um, well, it will depend on the person, of course. But I think that you can be touched by by a good book, or maybe they can uh, they can exert some influence on you uh, if you are reading an important book, or um, perhaps uh, if you if you read and if you like the book, uh, it can give you the the opportunity of well selecting the from this book i like this from this book i like this well my opinion is this so you can make a mixture of uh, literature of things to create your own ideas and i think that it will depend on, on the person but uh, i think that it it is or it has an important role in in developing person personality Can you such a teaching literature? Mm, there are a lot. Let me see. Uh, ah, well, uh, you can email me uh, because I have. Um, I, I don't have. I, I don't remember right now, but I have a perfect list with the things that um, you are asking. Me. But uh, lay. I don't know if you can listen to me, but uh, email me because I can give you that list. I don't remember right now, but I use it, I think that last year. Uh, and it was in, in it worked, it worked. So don't forget to email me. What is the best way to engage learners in terms of English literature from the ah, from Philippines? Uh, okay, the best way to engage learners in terms of English. Um, hmm. I think that first, uh, um, it, of course, it will depend on the age of your students and on the level uh, of English of your students. But I think that maybe uh, when presenting some images, uh, images uh, help a lot to 
um, to feel more motivated to read. And uh, one of my teachers um, at, the, at the end of the year, I mean, in 2021, um, well, they, they had to read, I think that it was a short story, uh, but, and they pre she presented some of the images and then she, um, kind, she was um, so, um, they make them try to think what they, they think the teacher, the images are going to show you, uh, to show them, and they guess what is the story about. And it was a beautiful um, activity because they come to the front and they choose the images and they put in different order. I think that images is a good way uh, to engage your learners to do so. Um, I think that um, one of the techniques that you can use is the ones that we present uh, at the very beginning, um, I think that it was uh, the selecting, uh, let me check, let me check in my papers because the, the constructing technique would, would, would work too. I lost Adil again. No ma'am, I am here. Okay, which form? Which form of literature is very best among pro? Oh, it's um, uh, you mean which form of literature is very best among pro drama? I think that the three of them. Uh, it will it will depend on the things that we need to work with your students. I think um, I I prefer to work. Well, this is my opinion, of course. Uh, I prefer to work with uh, drama and pro. Um, drama allow our students uh, to take roles to uh, mime. Uh, well, I think that uh, if you need to to read a play, uh, you can do a lot of different activities with this. Um, but uh, poetry is is okay too uh, because sometimes uh, poems uh, give give them the chance to to understand the literature or the language uh, from another point of view. Um, that's why I chose the, the image to show you. Uh, I, I don't know if you have seen the image that accompanies the slide with poetry is the man who, who is showing uh, his heart. That's, uh, I think that poetry is one, it's a wonderful uh, way of uh, letting them um, see the language in a, from another point of view. So I think I can choose. Uh, I don't know. It will depend on you and your preferences and your students. Uh, what is the better way to teach poetry uh, on primary, secondary, and higher level? Oh, okay, with poetry. Um, I think that uh, with poetry, um, we can, um, the transforming technique, um, it, would, it would be uh, uh, well if you work with this. Uh, especially if you, if you're with children, I, I, if I have to choose one technique to choose, reciting the poem. Uh, you choose a, a, an easy poem, for example, and uh, make them recite. And they, they, it is a fantastic way of teaching uh, pronunciation if you are working in primary, I mean. Um, and this is a, a fantastic way of trying to make them um, to understand what they read and how these words are pronounced. That, uh, I think that at this time uh, or at this level is uh, fundamental. Um, and this, yeah, the secondary level, I think that, uh, let me think. I think that you can do um, the compare and contrast activity. Maybe choose a, a book that has the film. I did it with one many years ago. I did it with uh, Notting Hill. We read the book and we saw the film and they it was wonderful because they compare the different things that happen in the movie well no it doesn't happen in the in, in the film uh, it was included in the in the book and this is a wonderful activity as a, for secondary level because they were then uh, of course 
they have to maybe they have to have an intermediate level for them for the film that I am mentioning, okay, intermediate or flat. Uh, but I think that it would be a wonderful activity to do the compare and contrast version of a book on the film. Um, and for Higer, um, you can do share writing like Sherry. You can find the the the, the, the complete activity uh, in the um, in the material that I included in the slide. But read Sherry because you are going to take wonderful idea for higher level. Um, to teach poetry in higher level. It is your journey in the field of literature. Okay. Uh, I love reading. First of all, my interest will start when I love reading. Um, but um, I always try to feel my students uh motivation um first i i come out um uh, i met sultan zarne uh, who is an specialist um in terms of motivation and i started reading a lot um a lot of his material and then i found well i need to apply this all this motivation knowledge to make my students read because they don't like reading. So I try to combine the motivation or all the things that Sultan Dornay uh, taught me in a way uh, applying to literature. And that's why I, I, I started it, uh, into this uh, field. Uh, I think that I answered this question. Oh, you can find a lot of material for there for uh, to develop critical thinking and skills in the QRs that I included in the textbook. Um, the, you can scan the, the, the code and you are uh, you are going to be redirected to different sites. But the site contains a lot of different sites that you can use to do it. Uh, because um, let me close. Sorry. Okay. Um, and here you can find a lot of material to work critical thinking. Um, I think that they belong to, there are a lot of activities um, from British English uh, that I have used and, it, and they, they work perfectly. Um, but I think that there you can find a lot of ideas and materials uh, there. Laura. Uh, I, uh, or Laura, I don't know. <laughs> I I pronounce in in my Spanish way. Okay, man. Uh, guys, uh, I'm uh, sending you the link uh, of the form, uh, feedback form. So you have to fill this form in order to get certificate. Guys, you can see this uh, link in your uh, chat box, in your comment box. Uh, fill this form, please, and uh, make sure that you must have uh, you must write your correct name and email. Yes, ma'am. We have uh, we have more questions. Uh, okay. Well. It was a pleasure for me to to be here. Thanks, uh, thanks for inviting me to sh to share this time with you. Oh, that's interesting question. That was my first question. In today's field, in today's technology field, where where 140 characters are the norm. Do we have any place for, for literature in ENG's classroom? I know that it is challenging. Uh, I know that it is sometimes you, you may feel that it is hard to do it because you have to pay a lot of attention to different interlink uh, uh, 
um, factors uh, and that selecting material that uh, can motivate your students uh, is difficult, but there is a way. Um, I think that uh, the only person that knows your students um, is you. So you are going to, to I think that the best, uh, the best thing you can do is to know your group to know um, sometimes you can uh, you can I did it uh, all the time when I was a, a teacher now I am a teacher trainer but I use um, surveys I use surveys with them and I and I included different questions what do you like what would you like to uh, read what are the, the interesting topics that um, you can find or you would like to find uh, throughout the course and I think that it is a good way to know your your students uh, because I we 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 know that uh, we are aware that uh, nanotechnology is going to to is now now is playing a, a fundamental role in their lives but um, I think that it is a challenge for us as teachers to make them uh, read and, and enjoy. That's why I insisted on the, the 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 thing that when we have to select the material, we need to pay attention to this because um, it it will develop a pleasure for reading. I think so. Um, I think that um, try to survey, try to 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 know what the teacher, what the uh, not the teacher, sorry, what the students. Uh, like I think that uh, maybe you are going to have uh, successful activities uh, if you take into account this. Yes. And also, uh, I was thinking uh, you can combine technology with literature. I mean, they can read the books, um, uh, or maybe you can use audio text. Uh, um, there are now we have to take advantage of uh, technology to make them read. Uh, as we mentioned before, audio audio uh, is very important for them since research uh, research has shown that um, uh, simultaneous reading and listening made them. Uh, understand the general meaning of the activity so we can take an advantage for um, from it and use it in our classroom so you can combine uh, i think that it is a good combination uh, what new research areas do you suggest for students uh, well i think that it will depend on your students and and your own interest it's for students uh, and uh, apart from that you are going to take if you are teaching in primary or secondary or a higher level so i think that um the research is going or the research area uh, is going to to be linked to to what you uh, uh, are into i think there are a lot of questions uh, i love that uh, but I don't know. I couldn't see um, from which uh, country are our participants. I only read Philip. Uh, I don't know. Philippines was one. Yes, I think so. Then you are going to tell me the different countries. I always like to know. How can interesting activities uh, be incorporated into the teaching of uh, literature? Okay. Um, as we mentioned before, I think that the activity that uh, can be more interesting is the one that are learner center. Um, they should be as learner center as possible. That's why um, we some, uh, we always try to to use um, motivation uh, when teaching literature or the different genres. Uh, you can ask, uh, for example, if you need to teach the different genres, prose or maybe poetry or drama, uh, they can make some research. Well, what is prose? What is poetry? What is drama? And they can find different pieces of writing to represent each, um, each genre. Uh, and I think that 
it's always about um, trying to make this activity interesting uh, for students. But I think that the activities that uh, will function better or in a better way would be the learn as learner center as possible. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so now, now guys, uh, uh, recording of this video will remain on the, our channel, the World Literature Webinar. Please subscribe it and you can uh, follow us on a Facebook page. And in future, we will be uh, bringing up uh, some uh, some more uh, webinars in the future. So I'll be now, there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So now I think uh, uh, now it's time to uh, end this live session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, that you have that you came. Me. thank you so much thank you so much bye bye see bye you bye. see you all